Hi, I'm George, and I'm going to show you how to remove the background from a line drawing here inside of Photoshop. Now, this is a fairly easy project to do, but there are a few things to make this work out the best. Now, before we get into that, make sure you click on that like button, hit subscribe, and if you want to learn a lot more about using Photoshop, take a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's take a look at this. Now, the easiest tool to use is the magic wand, but there's a problem with the magic wand. It tends to make kind of jaggy edges sometimes. So we're going to solve that one. Also, take a look at your whole image here and you want to see if there's anything where you have edges that are broken. And I see one right down here at the bottom. Let me just zoom in on this. There we go. Notice how it's broken right down there. That's going to allow the magic wand to select out here and also it's going to leak into there. So we need to fix that too. We'll start off though first by solving the problem with the jagged edges of the magic wand. And the best way to do that is by increasing the size of your image. Also, I always like to work on a copy and never on my original. Let's just do that right now. Go over here to the background layer, it says layer one. Right click on this one, right on the name, and then duplicate layer, choose okay. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of drawing on here. So that just kind of protects things. It's a very minor bit of drawing though. Then if anything goes bad, I can always go back to that background layer. That's my safety layer. Okay, let's increase the size of this. The larger the size of your file, the less the magic wand is going to give you jagged edges. So that's our next trick. So I'll go up here to image, come down to image size right here. And I'll be using the preserve details too, which is a really good method for doing this. This is a new method in here. Now my size at this point is 1341. I always like to increase my size in multiples, direct multiples of this. And I like doing that in even numbers if possible because Photoshop is gonna be increasing or doubling the number of pixels. And if it's an even multiple, it's gonna give you the cleanest results. So let's just time that by four. That's 1341 times four. And I'll just go like this. And this is gonna be 5364 right there. Now the width and the height are locked together. See the lock right there? That means that the height is going to increase in size to match the width, to match our new width, so that's fine. If you go over here, you can pull this up like that and to see if I hold it like this, that's what it's gonna look like if it's increased at the lower side. So I let go, that's our new size here with our preserved details. So that's gonna be perfect for us. Choose okay, and then let Photoshop work through and make that image size adjustment for us. And there we go, real tight and notice we have nice clean edges. So that's great. Now I'll hold the space bar down that gives me the hand tool. I'm just gonna push this image up like this you're down to the bottom down here, and I wanna fix that. All I need to do is to close this off somehow. I could put a line across here. I could pull these lines straight down. I could put a line straight across there. Whatever works out best for you. In this case, I'm just gonna go straight across because it's easy for us. So I have black as my foreground color. Let's go up here and grab our paintbrush. There's my paintbrush. Now you wanna have a hard edge paintbrush. So here's the hardness. I have been all the way to the right-hand side here. That's good. And I'll just come right here. I'm just gonna pull straight across like that. And that's really all I need to give me a nice hard edge. If I wanted to be real exact on that, I would have come in here and made a selection on that, make a real nice clean edge, but this is good enough for this video. So that just seals off this section from this section. So now Photoshop is not gonna accidentally take that magic wand and bleed it into here. We don't want that. Okay, so now zoom back out to fit on screen and then take your magic wand. And it will be up here on just the new selection and click part of the outside. Anywhere, it doesn't matter. I'll click out here. Now it selects that clear up to this edge and that's blocked at that point and it comes down here and that's blocked at this point. If I hadn't made that little line right here, the selection would have gone up inside here and that would have been incorrect. So we need to add in some more stuff. Go up here to the add button, there we go. And I'll click on here, that adds that section into our selection. Walk around over here, click into here. That adds this whole section into our selection. Let's come down here, I'll click in here, add this bit in. We now need to solve those enclosed areas Click in here, click right inside there, and click in here, and there we go. We've now added all of that into our selection. Now, I don't want to have this outside selected. I want to have what's in the roses selected. It's just easier doing the outside selection instead. So go up here to the Select menu and come down to Inverse, and now the roses are selected and not the outside. Now, again, keeping with my thinking of not damaging the image as much as possible, let's come down here and click on the Layer Mask button right there. And it gives us a layer mask. And there we go. We've now removed that background from that line drawing. Let's just double check those edges. I'll grab the magnifying glass. We'll zoom in on that. And you can see here, real nice, 
tight, clean edges in there using that magic wand, and that really gave us a nice, clean edge. Okay, let's go back here to fifth screen. One more thing on the magic wand, I have mine set at the default size. It's up here, 30 tolerance, and that worked out just fine. Sometimes, depending upon what's in your background, you may need to adjust the tolerance up here. The smaller the number, the less it's going to select, the higher the number, the more it's going to select. You shouldn't have any problem here with a straight black and white image though. And this can then be used in other artwork very easily or put in new backgrounds, whatever. If you want to come in and do any colorations on these sections, they're all separate sections. All you have to do is go over here, make sure you're on the image side, click into a selection with the magic wand that selects that section and then do your colorization right inside there. But if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop. It covers everything, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.